along on a journey across Australia, heading up the Supercharger Highway to Rockhampton and making a sharp left turn across Queensland and the Northern Territory, charging where we can. Hi everyone, let's look about look how far it is to go from Sydney to Darwin in a world scale. It's a long way. And if you plug into Google Maps, the most direct route with a petrol car is uh, right up the middle and it's about 4,000 kilometres. But trouble is this middle section here is there's no real EV charging infrastructure at all. And so we can optimise our route to suit an electric vehicle. One way we can do that is to go up the coast where there is suitable DC charges all the way to sort of Rockhampton and then we'll cut across the country at the top. So let's drag our route across to get up to Rockhampton by the coast. Okay, so now you can see that if we zoom out again, we've increased our journey by about 500 kilometers, but we should be able to do it quicker than we did before. Um, that stretch from long reach through to Darwin is exactly the same, but now we're going up the coast on the Supercharger Highway instead of that middle road, which would have taken us probably three or four days. We can get to Rockhampton in maybe two days uh, as a normal driving, yeah, driving like normal. So let's zoom in to how we do that second section after we leave Rockhampton and we're going to be using AC chargers to long reach. This is about 700 kilometers and we hope to do that in one day with a vehicle that has a maximum range of about 500 kilometers and that's 100% to zero. So we, we're obviously not gonna do the full 500, we're gonna to have to stop somewhere halfway in charge. This is a spreadsheet I developed to work out how, what speed to take to optimize the charging infrastructure en route. As you can see, it's set up to have 15% charge at arrival, leaving with 100% which means that it's designed to drive in the morning uh, from 100% overnight through to you know, a middle, middle place to charge and get there with at least 15%, charge up for a few hours on an AC charger and then drive the remaining way to your destination. I've plugged in 700 kilometers as my desired length of journey and we can start looking at the graphs on the uh, right hand side. So I've got five different types of charges. So this is this is going to depend on what I can get on that middle charging route. Uh, so there is a 10 amp charger, there's a 15 amp charger, and these are normal power points, 240 volts in Australia, a 32 amp single phase, which gives about seven kilowatts, a three phase using a UMC charger, which gives us seven kilowatts, and then third party, third, third three phase charger doing 11 kilowatts. So if we go through with some of these, a 10 amp, um, this is, you can graph out the speed of driving versus the time of, total time of trip. And as you can see, because you have to take so long to charge, uh, the less you can use while driving, therefore the less you need to charge in the middle trip means uh, it optimizes at a low speed. So go 80, going 80 kilometers an hour, uh, gets you there quicker than going 110 kilometers an hour because you have less time to charge in the middle. And as you can see, it still takes a fairly long time. And the gap between slowest to fastest is, is several hours. So you definitely don't want to go 110 kilometers if you only have a 10 amp charger. 15 amp is very similar, but it's a bit flatter. So the difference in time, because you've got a faster charging rate, is less pronounced. Still, it's better to go 80 kilometers an hour if you want to get there uh, at a reasonable time. And as you can see, uh, when you go to 32 amp, you start to get a little sweet spot around that 90 to 100 kilometer an hour. It doesn't really matter whether you go 90 or 100, uh, you will be there roughly the same time. That's good. Starting to get into the ballpark of an achievable drive in a day uh, with about a four and a half hour stop in the middle if you go 100 k's an hour. So that's getting to somewhere by 11, um, putting it on charge, uh, having lunch, seeing the sights, and sort of leaving by 3.30 to do the last few hundred kilometers to the journey. Uh, Three-phase UMC, because it's still only pulling seven kilowatts, is about the same. So you get that sort of 100, 90 to 100 k. So 100 k is an hour, highway speed, but that's quite a good journey. Uh, you're getting there you know, in, a, in a bit over 10 and a half hours. The, uh, 
The real sweet spot though is if you can use a three phase 11 kilowatt charger. This is for the Model 3, so that's the fastest it can charge off AC. But as you can see, there's a perfect sweet spot at 100 k's an hour, uh, where you get there you know, in a reasonable time and your charge time is in the sort of less than three hours time. So that is really a long lunch and a walk around town. So three phase, 11 kilowatts uh, from, a, uh, from a showgrounds PowerPoint or something like that, or a Tesla, Tesla Powerwall, that's where you want to try and find those ones. And if you've got a Model S, you can actually go to 22 kilowatts and get far better performance, but this is all related to Model 3. So with this graph, we can put in our kilometers and then we can work out, okay, what are our options for charging mid-journey and then work out the optimum speed to travel depending on that charger type. And hopefully we avoid the 10 amps and the 15 amps because that's going to make it a long day. And I think at Emerald, we can get the full three phase 11 kilowatts, which is halfway on our journey through here. So we're leaving Rockhampton, going to Longreach, stopping at Emerald for that charge in the middle. So that's one day, first day of off DC charges. Then it's just simple one day hops to Winton. So we just charge overnight, uh, no problems there. Winton up to um, Mount Isa, which um, is another day. So therefore we can just charge overnight again. So none of this midday charging business. After Mount Isa, it gets a bit tricky because now we're into the sort of truck stop land. There's nothing, there's no towns out here. There's very little truck stop. There is a three phase charger at this town here. So we can top up there. But after that, it's just truck stops with 15 amp or 10 amp power points. So we'll probably get as far as Barclay Tablelands Roadhouse there, stay overnight, and uh, then, so leave Mount Isa, charge up there stay overnight there, next day push on to some of these other little road, ha uh, road houses up here, again see how far we can get and, um, and do an overnight charge to get back up to sort of around 100%. Um, and finally as we get further up towards Darwin we hit Mataranka and where you know it's a tourist destination we're quite happy to stay overnight, see the sights and um, get a good charge and same with Catherine. Uh, Plenty, plenty of things to do in Catherine so we can stay overnight and then it's just a two or three hundred kilometer journey to Darwin which you can easily do on one charge. So we've got that nice little stop at the end where we're doing more touristy things where it's okay to stop. We've got the hard yards through the sort of outback there where we're staying in truck stops, really enjoying the outback experience um, with long charges overnight or hanging, hanging around during the day and then um, getting up to Mataranka and then pretty much that's it. So it's, uh, it's, it's pretty doable, I think, in a sort of a nine to 10 day period.